Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Middleborg. I guess resistance is futile. Anyway, it's important to stress that what you're looking at here is a pre-early access build, so everything that you're about to see is subject to change. And I gotta say, this game is incredibly rough around the edges. I just played it, and... I was doing okay, so I thought, and then like around turn four or five, I got slaughtered. So what is this game all about? Well, it's a roguelike, but you're a city. I'll let you wrap your brains around that one for a minute. Um, here's a look at the main menu in the meantime. There's continue, new game, journal, settings. Under settings, there's nothing else but language. So there's no way to adjust the volume. No way to adjust your screen resolution from here. The game runs on Unity, so you will be able to adjust screen resolution, toggle full screen, and adjust the graphics quality via a separate window pop-up before the game launches, but you cannot do it in-game. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start a new game, and I'll show you what I know. Again, I'm not going to get very far based on my previous playthrough. There's no tutorial. No tutorial, so like I said, I'll do my best to show you what's going on. So, you've got this city here, and then this world tree. The world tree, think of that as your health. If that goes to zero, you lose. In my previous playthrough, I had 100 world tree health. I got attacked four times and died instantly. There's a lot of balance issues, apparently, still going on with this. This game is so rough around the edges. But anyway... You've got guards and you've got barriers. Guards and barriers, think of them as shields protecting your world tree. You're going to be receiving, like, physical damage, which your guards will protect against, and then magic damage, which your barriers will protect against. In the upper right-hand corner, it says 75 out of 300 mana. That's your currency. You're going to be spending that on different things in your city. Three out of three mages, you can assign these mages to different buildings to give them benefits, uh, to increase their efficiency. This is turn-based, so when you're done with your turn, you can hit end turn. There's an inventory here for potions, scrolls, and artifacts that you'll be collecting. And that's about it. So, one thing right out of the gate I think would be necessary... On the left-hand side of the screen, just have a list of all the buildings that you can interact with. You actually have to mouse over the building that you want to interact with and then click on it, instead of having it all in one neat little area. So if I want to interact with this windmill, which I didn't know I could do until I started playing, left-click on it. So it gives me 50 production per day in the bottom right-hand corner. Well, instead of it being, I guess it's not ether, it's, instead of, I said it was mana, I guess it's ether. Whatever, I'm going to call it mana. But anyway, you produce this ether slash mana every turn, and you can level it up for 50 if you want to do that. You can also assign one of your mages here to make it more effective. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This now gives me 50 plus 5 per day. I'm going to go ahead and level up this district, and now I'm down to 25. Uh, I'm going to click on the garrison here. This is where I can repair, um, I can repair the guards. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assign this mage to make this more effective, 10% more effective. And then this one, this is the Tower of Light. Here, again, I can assign a mage. And this is where you can repair your barrier damage. I'm going to go ahead and try and split this as best as possible. So maybe, say, 12 for that one. And my guards, go ahead and repair for as much as I can. I guess 12. Okay. Guess that's it. Now, as far as I know, that's all you can really interact with. You do have um, this chambers in the background you can click on, and this just gives you your quests, chronicles, achievements, traits, and spells. All right, so I want to get end turn, and stuff happens. City has received ten physical damage, resisted one. Garrison guards take nine damage. Prejudices. Now, on occasion, things will pop up and you have to decide how you want to handle it. There are two dozen of gnarls standing at the gates that you barely can talk. But from what they are snorting, I can understand they are looking to serve in our army. Um, sure, accept them. 
Uh, who would have known that these creatures can run so fad t fast, I guess. Bites, I get, there's a lot of grammar, grammatical issues in this as well. Bites so hard and destroy that as much as in a short time. So basically, they, they screwed us and we are now cursed. With what I don't know. I have the storm, everything is calm. Okay, so now we are on turn two. I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. We're going to... Okay, leave that alone. Alright, let's go ahead and repair this for 56. And repair this for 38. I have no idea what the curse does, to tell you the truth. It doesn't really say what the curse did. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade... It costs... Oh, that's 150 to upgrade that. Oh, oh, by the way, upgrading your buildings, like I did with this windmill, opens up a new tab. So I click on this tab, and this is a market. I can buy potions from here. For example, this Taste of the Wind Tier 1 potion. Increases the limit of ether to the end of the next calm phase by 25%. I can randomize for two more ether. I'm going to be using ether and mana interchangeably. I like mana better. But anyway... So I've got 72 out of 300 of this ether slash mana left. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this district. And that opens this up now. This portal. I can send my mages on these quests. I've got 0 out of 3 to send. But if I were to unassign one. Let's say I don't want them assigned to this district anymore. I can remove the mage from here. Come over here. Uh, yeah. Here. Here. Click on this tab, and I can do walk in the long bogs, and mages may come across the following relics. So they may come across a drop of plenty potion, which increases the production of ether by 10%. Or the hunter's bestiary, which is a scroll, which I don't know what it does, but okay. Uh, or you can go on a different mission, like the outing in the ooze, or the ooze, ooze, whatever. Traveler's Secret, or Voice of Steel potion, or scroll, or Dragon Blood Potions. Yeah. So you, you pick which one you want, and let's just say Walk in the Bog, send. Expedition sent, and we're out of Ether, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit end turn. Wild Child. I've seen a child standing upright, a baby with the face of an old man. Uh, he's telling that he needs to see you. Uh, bring him to the hall. He prayed and left, that's all. I don't think he had any intentions at all. Okay. City has received 54 physical damage, resisted 6. Garrison guards has taken 48 damage. Okay. Now imagine that happening four times. My world tree got wiped out in one turn, it was ridiculous. We have acquired a very unusual artifact during our last trip to the grim world of Erd. It is a golden ring, presumably a crown of the old ones, but there's no certainty here. Um, I can class this cleansing spell. Sure, we'll do that. World tree has received four damage. Okay. Fine. We found the voice of steel scroll. I don't know what it does. Now that our guy is back, um... I guess we can send him back out somewhere else. Scouting in the green fields. There we go. And we need to repair this for 96. 81 left. Let's go ahead and upgrade this district. And that gives us access to the laboratory. The best alchemists of the middle world work here. So basically you create two potions or combine two potions to create a random potion. All right, end turn. City has received 46 magical damage. Everything is calm. The potion. I'm about to finish a potion of great power and dangerous one as well. If mixed and boiled properly, it will grant our tree a month or even more life. What should I add? Well, that doesn't help. Do uh, nothing. Item found. Fool's Riddle. Alright, now can we do anything with these? Doesn't look like it. Again, without a tutorial, you're just sort of flying blind, hoping for the best. Repair that.
Um, add him there. Ten percent protection and turn. The next upgrade costs one hundred and fifty. City has received sixty-seven magical damage. Magical barriers received fifty damage. City has received 52 magical damage. World Tree has received 46 damage. The compass. I see a golden arrow pointing south. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Last man standing on his world. Should we save him? Revive and question him. We were too late. Uh, okay, so he healed the world tree for 7 health points. Fine. The black hand. Oh, there's more. Arrest them with one R. Catch them red-handed. Deal with their leader. Deal with their leader is fine. Uh, okay. Fine. I don't think there's a way to heal the world tree. I think it regenerates automatically. We're going to have to start maybe buying potions. We have to definitely repair our barrier. There we go. We can't do any more than that. There we go. Um, at this point, I've got 50 out of 300, so there's not much I can do. I guess we'll just end turn. And game over. Well, there you go. So, that was the game. Um, I don't know what visit the present, visit the past, and visit the future means. Um... Following achievements unlocked. So, yeah, this game, very, very rough around the edges. No tutorial, no settings to speak of. This needs more time to cook. But, if you like what you see, it'll be on Steam's early access program in about six or seven hours as of the time and date of this recording. Alright, well this is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.